Yes, let's talk about hockey, the show that journeys through the history of the sport of ice hockey from its disputed origins to the game we see today. After nearly a decade and a half of expansion, the NHL's size remained locked at 21 teams throughout the 1980s. But after the Wayne Gretzky trade to LA in 1988 grew hockey's popularity in that city, the league began to look at tapping into new markets during the 90s. In the second year of this 90s expansion effort, two new teams joined the fray the second of which was set up in the Canadian capital and was named after one of the NHL's founding four hockey clubs, the Ottawa Senators. After the original Senators relocated to St. Louis to become the Eagles in 1934, Ottawa would be the home of a senior hockey-level Senators club in the Quebec Amateur Hockey Association and Quebec Senior Hockey League from 1934 until December of 1954. Then, professional hockey made a brief return to the city with the WHA's Ottawa Nationals in 1972 and then the Ottawa Civics in 1976. However, both would be short-lived, with the Nationals moving to Toronto after one season and the Civics, who had just moved to town from Denver in the middle of the WHA's 1975-76 season, only lasting seven games before the club folded altogether. In the late 80s, a Bring Back the Senators campaign was started by real estate developer Bruce Firestone, who put in a bid to be a part of the NHL's expansion plan in the 90s. A press conference was held on September 7, 1989 to kick off the campaign, and featured Frank Finnegan, the last surviving member of the Senators' last Stanley Cup championship team in 1927, who was presented with a new jersey featuring a conceptual logo for the new club and promised to drop the first puck at the first game if the club was approved. Impressed by Ottawa's presentation and their season ticket drive, the NHL approved Ottawa's application on December 6, 1990. However, things got off to a very rocky start for the new club. Though the Senators were going to use the old Civic Center for their home rink to start, Part of their franchise bid proposal to the NHL included plans for a new arena. Unfortunately, zoning issues arose with the site of the planned arena, and the delays, along with the restructuring of the development plans, put the franchise in a difficult financial position before the first puck was even dropped. In the expansion draft, Ottawa mainly received journeyman players, with the only notable acquisition being winger Sylvain Turgeon from the Montreal Canadiens. For the entry draft, though, they were given the second overall pick, which they used to select center Alexei Yashin. On October 8, 1992, the Senators took to the ice in their club's first game, which included a pre-game ceremony featuring the raising of banners commemorating the original Senators' eight Stanley Cup titles and the retirement of Frank Finnegan's jersey number. In the game itself, Ottawa's Neil Brady opened up the scoring with a power play goal 26 seconds into the first period. Three other Senators would get on the score sheet as Ottawa skated to a 5-3 win against the Canadians. Unfortunately, things took a turn for the worst after this first game. Ottawa would lose 20 out of their next 21 games, and by the end of the year they would only manage to win 10 games total, time for the worst record in the league. Additionally, their single road game victory set a new record for fewest road wins. Not only was the Senators' poor performance this first year disappointing to the fans, but it also became the focus of a postseason investigation by the league after Ottawa's owner Bruce Firestone made comments suggesting his team tanked some of their games to ensure they would finish last and get the number one overall choice in the 93 entry draft which was expected to be Victoriaville Tigers center Alex Daig. Though Ottawa would ultimately get the first pick and select Daig, the club was fined $100,000 by the league, and by 1995 the rules were changed so that a lottery would be held for the top draft picks. Because of his comments, and the financial strain the club's debts were putting on him, Firestone stepped aside and Terrence Corporation CEO Rod Bryden became the club's new owner. Over the next three seasons, the Senators would go through two coaches and three GMs and finish dead last in the league each year, despite the club's top draft picks Alexei Yashin and Alex Daig finishing number one and number two in team scoring respectively in 93-94 and 94-95. Additionally, 
By the 95-96 season, Yashin was a contract holdout since management favored Daig over him, even though Daig posted lower offensive numbers than Yashin. And the Senators' first overall pick from that year's draft, Brian Burrard, had left the team's training camp unsigned to a contract and publicly stated that he would never report to the Senators. It was with this turmoil that former Ducks assistant GM Pierre Gauthier stepped in as the club's new GM in December of 1995. Before the end of his second month at the helm, Gauthier had signed Yashin to a three-year contract, traded Berard to the New York Islanders for Wade Redden, and hired former Blues coach Jacques Martin as the new head coach. Though the Senators still finished the year at the bottom of the league, a turnaround had begun for the club. The biggest symbol of this new direction was young winger Daniel Alfredson, who led the team in goals, assists, and points, and took home the Calder Trophy as the NHL Rookie of the Year. The Senators even finally moved into their new arena, dubbed the Palladium, during the latter half of this season as well. Though Ottawa got off to a slow start to the 96-97 season, they would make a strong push in their final 16 games, earning 22 points to finally clinch a playoff berth, thanks to Steve Duchesne's lone goal in a 1-0 victory over Buffalo during their last game of the regular season. Buffalo would also end up being Ottawa's opening round opponent. With Alfredson, Yashin, and Duchesne combining for 15 points in the first five games of the series, Ottawa pushed Buffalo to the brink of elimination. However, Sabres goaltender Steve Shields shut out the Senators in Game 6 and in Game 7 allowed only two goals, while at the other end, Yashin accidentally put the puck into his own net, resulting in the game going into overtime, and just five and a half minutes into the extra period, Derek Plant scored to win the series for Buffalo. Despite Ottawa's first playoff run being short, the team's turnaround continued the following year when they posted their first winning season with a 34-33-15 record and secured the final playoff slot in the Eastern Conference. Against top-ranked New Jersey in the first round, Yashin and Alfredson would again combine to lead the way offensively for the club, as the Senators managed to surprise everyone with a six-game upset of the Devils to advance to the second round for the first time. Unfortunately, in the second round, they were not able to overcome the obstacle that was Washington goaltender Olaf Kolzig, as they fell to the Capitals in just five games. Over the next four years, Ottawa would have more success in the regular season, winning two division titles in 1999 and 2001, as well as Jacques Martin winning the Jack Adams Award for Coach of the Year in 1999. However, in the playoffs, they were not as successful winning only one out of their five playoff series. In addition to that, contract disputes with star center Alexei Yashin ultimately resulted in the Senators trading him to the Islanders prior to the 2001 entry draft in exchange for Zdeno Chara, Bill McCult, and a first-round draft pick, which they used to select center Jason Spezza. After losing to Toronto in the playoffs for the third year in a row, Ottawa began the 2002-2003 season with their best start in club history, going 13-6-3 over the first 22 games. With Mirian Hossa, Daniel Alfredson, and Todd White all tallying 60 or more points, Patrick Lalim ranking 5th in the league for goals against average, and Zdeno Chara in the top 10 in plus-minus, the Senators finished the season atop the NHL, earning them the President's Trophy. In the first round of the playoffs, Ottawa was shut out in Game 1 by the Alexei Yashin-led Islanders, but during the next four games, the Senators outscored the Islanders 13-4 to win the series in five games. Against Philadelphia in Round 2, the two teams traded wins over the first four games of the series. Then, in Games 5 and 6, Brian Smolinski, Peter Schaefer, Daniel Alfredson, and Martin Havlett each scored a goal a game while Lalim held the Flyers to only three goals to give the Senators 5-2 and 5-1 victories and advance them to the conference finals for the first time. In round three, Ottawa was pitted against the second-ranked Devils. Though the Senators won game one thanks to Sean Van Allen's overtime goal, New Jersey ended up taking the next three to put Ottawa on the brink. Luckily, the Senators rallied for a 3-1 win in Game 5 and then a 2-1 overtime win in Game 6 to extend the series. 
Late in the third period of Game 7, the score remained tied at 2 before Jeff Friesen scored for the Devils with two and a half minutes left to seal the Senators' fate. Despite this franchise best season, the Senators had filed for bankruptcy in January of 2003 due to their mounting debts, which had been an issue since day one for the franchise. Though thanks to some emergency financing from the NHL, the club was able to hold out until BioVale CEO Eugene Melnick purchased them in August. With some financial stability finally present, Ottawa looked to build on their success from the previous year. In 2003-2004, the Senators again had a strong regular season, finishing third in their division, but fell flat in the playoffs when Toronto knocked them out in the first round, following Ottawa giving up three goals in the first period of Game 7. After this playoff disappointment, Jacques Martin was fired and replaced by Anaheim GM Brian Murray, Patrick Laleem and Radek Bonk were traded, and veteran goaltender Dominic Hasek was signed. Unfortunately, the 2004-2005 season never happened due to the NHL lockout, but just before the 2005-2006 season, the Senators made another big trade when they acquired Danny Heatley from Atlanta in exchange for Marion Hossa. Heatley was then paired with Alfredson and Spezza to form the team's top offensive line that the fans later dubbed the Cash Line. Behind these three, the team won 19 of their first 22 games, and by the end of the year finished first in the Eastern Conference, with Heatley becoming the team's first 50-goal scorer, while Alfredson and Spezza each tallied 90 or more points. In the playoffs, the Senators were without Hasek and Ned due to an injury he sustained while playing in the Olympics back in February, so backup goalie Ray Emery got starting duties. Emery performed well in the opening round series against Tampa Bay, stopping 158 out of 171 shots, while Havlett, Heatley, and Spezza put up 10 points each to eliminate the Lightning in five games. Against Buffalo in the second round, though, Ottawa faced much tougher competition. Each game would be decided by only one goal, with three going into overtime. Unfortunately for the Senators, they were on the losing end of most of these contests, as the Sabres bested them in five games. After this defeat, there was a large retooling of the roster, as Chara, Hasek, Havlet, and Smolenski all departed via free agency or trade. Ottawa would have a rough start to the 2006-2007 season, going 17-18-1 in their first 36 games but were able to turn things around in late December with a six-game point streak, followed by three more point streaks of five or more games over the next three months to finish second in their division. Behind the offensive power of the cash line, the strong defense provided by Chris Phillips and Anton Volchenkov, and the goaltending of Ray Emery, the Senators tore through the first three rounds of the playoffs, beating Pittsburgh, New Jersey, and Buffalo in five games each to become the first Ottawa team to make it to the Stanley Cup Finals since 1927. Against Anaheim in the Finals, the first two games were close, but the Ducks' third period scoring ability gave them the one goal edge for both contests. For Game 3 in Ottawa, the Senators were finally able to hold off any third period charges by Anaheim for a 5-3 win. However, the Ducks again took control in the next two games with 3-2 and 6-2 victories to end Ottawa's hopes of a cup championship. After their run to the finals, the Senators got off to a hot start to the 2007-2008 season, going 25-9-4 during the first three months. However, the team began slumping after that, resulting in them barely managing to make the playoffs, and once there, they were swept by Pittsburgh in the first round. Following that, the Senators would be an on-again, off-again playoff qualifier over the next eight seasons, and were only able to make it past the first round once during this time period, before suffering a second round elimination. However, the club has been slowly building back up over this time too, with the drafting of Eric Carlson and the acquisitions of Dion Phaneuf, Bobby Ryan, and Craig Anderson. The result of which has been the Senators coming within one goal of making it back to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2017. With renewed determination, Ottawa now looks to finally elevate their club to a Stanley Cup title.